One of the most exciting developments in lung cancer at this year's ASCO was some new agents that appear to break the impasse that we've had for a decade in how to deal with acquired resistance. Patients who respond very well to a targeted therapy, in this case EGFR inhibitor therapy in patients who have an EGFR mutation, but at some point, whether it's months or years later, will have their cancer grow through it. And it's a frustrating thing to have done well for so long and then have that slip through your fingers. So there were a couple of agents that, that really looked exciting, and one of them was AZD9291. Melissa, can you tell us about that and uh, where it's going? Sure. This was a phase one trial, actually, that Dr. That, uh, Dr. Yanni reported uh, the dose escalation. So AZD9291 is a third generation EGFR inhibitor. Um, so we think it might work in this uh, situation where patients have, patients' tumors have learned to grow despite the other drugs. The first part of the trial that he reported was the dose escalation phase. And what that means is you start real low and you go up step by step by step to make sure that, uh, that you find the best dose that is the tolerated, that is tolerated without, uh, without toxicity. What I mean by that is without side effects that limit a patient's ability to tolerate the drug. So the point of the study was to, to figure out the right dose to use. Um, there was pharmacokinetic studies, which means you know, how, what does the body do to the drug. And then the next part of the study was to see, okay, so now that we know what the safest dose is, how does it work, and, what's, and what are the side effects. So there were about 200 patients in this trial, and 53% uh, of them responded to, the, to this agent. Now, and so that's a... That's a remarkable response for these patients with acquired resistance to EGFR uh, inhibitors, the second, the first and, and second generations. The other interesting uh, analysis in this trial was that patients were separated based on whether or not they had a T790M mutation in the acquired resistance setting. So that's a, the most common marker that we see of, uh, of resistance, a second mutation in EGFR. And in those patients with a T790M mutation, the objective response rate was 64%. Where in those patients without a T790M mutation, the objective response rate was 23%. Still not bad for this population of patients, but there was, a, there was an obvious difference between the two groups of patients. Now the other cool thing about this drug, uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors directed against EGFR very typically cause rash and diarrhea. Um, the frequency of those side effects in this group of, in, in this study, were quite low. So this appears to be a well-tolerated tyrosine kinase inhibitor to boot. And that was, I believe, the, the idea behind that is that those toxicities, the side effects of the treatment, are derived from hitting the so-called wild-type target, the, the not intended uh, and, and less specific one. And in fact, yeah. these molecules are very specific for the mutation without necessarily hitting the wild type and causing the side effects. What we find so often is that when you figure out how to not uh, target wild-type EGFR, for example, that comes at a cost of, a, of another sort of toxicity. And, and that was less apparent mm -hmm. in this trial. Um, most patients responded within the first uh, six weeks of treatment. And so uh, this, was, this was a drug that was achieving its uh, goal uh, in a potent fashion, so pretty soon after starting. And seemingly pretty long responses also. Seem I think Dr. Yanni reported a progression-free survival around five or six months. What was your impression of this? Well, this is exciting. Um, you know, we have uh, a certain group of patients who have tumors that are driven by 
this mutation. And God knows why they got this mutation. Most people who have this mutation have never smoked, which is what 90% of lung cancer is attributed to. But for whatever reason, they have this gene mutation. And this type of cancer seems to be simpler. It's less mutated, and there is a driver mutation. And we've had incredibly satisfying results with drugs like erlotinib and afatinib, and in other parts of the world, gefitinib. But there's a limit to how much benefit there is. But half of the patients whose tumors start to grow despite inhibiting this target have what appears to be a pretty simple target to reignite another response. And it's this T790 mutation. It's a little different change. It's a change in the conformation where the drug actually binds. It's a similar theme that we see in other cancers, such as chronic myelogenous leukemia. It's why that pretty simple disease acquires resistance to a drug like imatinib. And so several companies have engineered a drug to specifically look at T790, and it works. Mm -hmm. um, the response rates are, are quite remarkable. They're not as long as we want them to be, uh, but it really does prove the principle. And then the other remarkable thing, as you mentioned, is that um, while erlotinib and afatinib sort of go by the tagline of being oral medicines that people tolerate reasonably well, we all know that some patients don't tolerate these drugs reasonably well. The diarrhea can be substantial. The skin rash in some patients, not all, and probably not even the majority, maybe 10%, can be debilitating. It can be very difficult. And some patients get mouth sores and they get nausea. And the reason why they get this is because the targeted gene is critical for the development of your skin and the development of your GI tract. So what's clever about these drugs is uh, they not only target this T790 mutation, but they spare the wild type. Now, the AZ drug does it, but we heard at ASCO this year other drugs which probably spare it even more. Mm -hmm. One other interesting thing about this is for the first time we're seeing a specific value in the T790M detection. So I'll ask two questions, and one is, there was a response rate in T790M negative. Should we be ignoring its potential applicability in that population, or two, does this finding now change the value proposition for rebiopsy and make it overwhelmingly appealing when previously it was a, at best debatable point? Well, we I think are at a point now where we need to rebiopsy. T790M is not the only mechanism of resistance. There are several that have been described, although it is the most common. Um, but we know, for instance, MET amplification is a mechanism of resistance. And we heard at this same meeting that tumors that have MET amplification may respond to crizotinib. Crizotinib we think of as an ALK inhibitor. That's Zalcori. Uh, but it's actually a much more potent <laughs> MET inhibitor. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Kamage reported data uh, this year in tumors with MET amplification that respond. And actually, if you have really high copy numbers, really high amplification, the majority of the patients responded to crizotinib. So that may or may not be a preferred drug to use, but I think it does underscore that we need to understand the biologic basis for resistance. So this might have been a real turning point for making the case for rebiopsy far and wide rather than just primarily at the academic center. If centers. there's something you can do, if there's, if there's something that will change what you do, then a rebiopsy seems, I wouldn't use the word mandatory because sometimes it's hard to rebiopsy and sometimes patients don't want to rebiopsy. I don't want patients to feel guilty about it and I don't want you to do dangerous things for patients either. But in many circumstances, these things can be done safely and patients certainly, if they understand that the treatment decision will change, I think they'll be agreeable to it. So it certainly makes it over much more compelling. I think so. What about the question of, of whether these this agent should 
be offered to the patients without a T790 mutation? That was something we discussed in the uh, in both discussion sessions, both uh, uh, this drug and, and a similar one. So whether or not this drug works in T790M negative patients is something that we discussed um, at this session on Saturday. Uh, the investigators thought that a lot of the response in the T790M negative patients was due to retreatment, the retreatment phenomenon, meaning that they, uh, these patients may have been off a TKI maybe seen some chemotherapy and had gone back on a TKI with a similar mechanism to the, to the first generation. It does make you wonder, however, you know, uh, are there other mechanisms that are being addressed? But the, I think the take home point from, from this discussion should be that this is a EGFR inhibitor that works well for the T790M folks, and and, uh, and I think we still have some work to do to find an equivalent alternative for patients with uh, other mechanisms of resistance in their tumor.